On April 14, 1912, the Titanic, the largest and most luxurious ship ever built, was sailing on its maiden voyage, a journey that promised to be the safest and most luxurious in history, until everything changed. At 11.40 p.m., an iceberg was sighted and the fate of the Titanic was sealed. But what if Officer William Murdoch had changed his orders, reversed the engines, kept the course, and awaited a head-on collision with the iceberg? Could the Titanic have survived such a direct impact? Would the force of the collision have caused fewer casualties or even prevented the ship from sinking altogether? Let's explore this hypothesis with the help of artificial intelligence to discover how this decision could have altered the history of the world's most famous shipwreck. Before anything else, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Brueger Films channel, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and turn on notifications. It helps us continue producing more content like this. Now let's jump to the crucial moment, the exact point when Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee spotted the iceberg. From that moment, Murdoch, the first officer in command on the bridge, had just 37 seconds to make a decision. Along with him, two other officers were on the bridge. Officer James Moody, who answered the phone from the lookout post, and Charles Lightoller, the second officer, who was resting and later participated in the evacuation efforts after the collision. Captain Edward Smith, although he was resting, arrived on the bridge shortly after the collision. It was Murdoch who gave the order for hard to port and full astern in an attempt to avoid the iceberg. We know that the Titanic had the capacity to reach a maximum speed of 23 to 24 knots, which is approximately 42 to 44 kilometers per hour. However, this speed was never actually reached during the maiden voyage. Based on the conditions on the night of the sinking, it's likely that the Titanic was traveling at an average speed of 35 kilometers per hour. In an attempt to avoid the massive block of ice, due to the ship's size and speed, the response was too slow, resulting in a side collision that tore the hull, compromising more than four watertight compartments and causing fatal damage. But what if Murdoch had opted for a head-on collision he knew the Titanic was composed of 16 watertight compartments, and the ship could stay afloat with up to four of them flooded. So, let's imagine Murdoch considered all the possibilities, including the failed attempt to steer away, which could fatally damage the side of the ship. Then his orders were, Full speed astern, bow straight into the iceberg, brace for impact. Now we've changed the course of history. A frontal impact would have caused a devastating collision. To understand the possible consequences of this decision, it's essential to analyze the structure of the Titanic's bow. At the front, known as the forecastle deck, were the huge chains, anchors, as well as the entrances to the third-class accommodations and bathrooms located in this area. On deck C, there were some areas reserved for the crew's meals. On deck D, the coal trimmer's accommodations were located, along with the staircase leading to the lowest deck, offering direct access to the boiler rooms. On deck E was the entrance to the third-class accommodations located at the bow of the ship, along with rooms and bathrooms for the passengers of that class. On deck F, just ahead, were more crew accommodations and third-class passenger cabins. On deck G, still above the waterline, was the last deck with rooms for passengers and crew. This deck also housed areas for luggage, the mailroom, and even a squash court. We arrive at the Orlop deck, a space reserved exclusively for cargo and a room dedicated to mail. And finally, the tank top, the Titanic's lowest level, used for cargo storage and also where the coal trimmer's corridor was located, with direct access to the boiler rooms. Throughout the length of the Titanic, there was a system of 15 bulkheads that formed 16 watertight compartments, connected by watertight doors. 
These doors remained open during normal operations, but could be closed in seconds in an emergency. According to the original design, the Titanic would be able to stay afloat with up to four compartments flooded. However, during the sinking, a gash in the hull damaged six compartments, making it impossible for the ship to remain afloat. This led to the most famous shipwreck in history, claiming the lives of 1,500 people. Using artificial intelligence, we conducted an analysis based on the ship's mass, speed, and the power of the engines in reverse. All calculations indicate that the Titanic would have reduced its speed to about 29.6 kilometers per hour, which would not have been enough to avoid the collision, but could have lessened the intensity of the impact. The third-class passengers and crew members on decks, D and E, located in the bow, would have been the most affected. The Titanic was carrying approximately 2,224 people on its maiden voyage, including passengers and crew. Another crucial point to analyze is the distribution of these passengers across the ship's sections. Bow, midship, and stern. In the bow, there were between 350 and 500 people. In the midship section, between 600 and 800. And in the stern, approximately between 500 and 600 people. Estimating the impact of a scenario like the one we've just described involves many variables. But we can perform a qualitative analysis to understand the possible consequences for the people in different sections of the Titanic. In the bow, which would collide directly with the iceberg, structural deformation would be severe. The people in this part would be at extreme risk. We can estimate that between 50 and 150 people might lose their lives, mainly those closest to the point of impact and in the crew's quarters. The severely injured could number between 100 and 200 due to the force of the impact sudden falls, crushing, and the projection of objects. Those with minor injuries would range between 150 and 200 people, suffering cuts, bruises, and minor falls. In the midship section, which would feel an indirect impact, the shock would be strong enough to cause falls, collisions with objects, and widespread panic. It's estimated that between five and 10 people could lose their lives, mainly due to falls on staircases or trampling during the panic. The severely injured could range from 50 to 100, while the slightly injured could reach between 200 and 400 people with minor injuries, cuts, and bruises. In the stern, the ship's rear, the impact would be minimal with much softer effects. Estimates suggest that few deaths would occur in this section, probably no more than five. The severely injured could range from 20 to 50, mainly due to falls, while those slightly injured could number between 100 and 300 people with minor injuries and bruises. Thus, in a direct frontal collision with the iceberg, we can account for around 50 to 165 deaths, most of them concentrated in the bow. The severely injured would number between 170 and 350, spread across the three sections with a higher concentration in the bow. Meanwhile, those slightly injured would range between 450 and 900 people, mainly in the midship and stern sections. In this way, we can deduce that while a frontal impact would cause significant injuries and deaths, it would result in far fewer human losses compared to the sinking tragedy, which claimed over 1,500 lives. That is, of course, if the Titanic didn't sink due to structural damage. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. That way, YouTube recommends us to more people and we can continue producing more videos for you all. Well, with this simulation, we can imagine that the Titanic would have had two compartments destroyed and its bow severely damaged, but it would still be afloat. It's possible that the ship, in reverse, could have made its way to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Halifax, about 700 nautical miles, approximately 1,300 kilometers from the collision site, 
was one of the nearest ports and had the infrastructure to accommodate large ships like the Titanic. Under these conditions, sailing in reverse at a speed of 5 to 10 knots, about 9 to 18 kilometers per hour, the Titanic would likely have reached Halifax in about five days. Unfortunately, this was not the story of that fateful night. The Titanic broke in two and took over 1,500 lives with it. Now we want to hear from you. What do you think of this theory? If the ship had faced the iceberg head on, could it have remained afloat without sinking? Is it really possible to say that more lives would have been saved? One choice could have changed everything. This is the story of how the Titanic could have survived. Bruger Films hopes you enjoyed this production. Now don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and of course, share it with your friends. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next production. See you soon.